Welcome to Rising Goddess Radio. I'm your hostess, Michelle Torrance. I created Rising Goddess Radio to be a space where we dive deep into our spiritual, emotional, and physical bodies. We're getting real and connecting with ourselves in the most intimate ways. We'll be talking all things sacred sexual, relationship building, and womb healing. We'll be learning how to connect with our bodies through learning the language it speaks, how to use our sexual and sensual energies to create, manifest, and heal our lives. This show is about healing the chaotic feminine and toxic masculine within to create a world that responds to the divine and healthy energy you chose to tune in, tap in, and turn on. We will learn from amazing humans who take time and share their wisdom and sacred healing magic, raising humans who are here in this world to be healers, teachers, guides, priestesses, warriors, and shamans, all divine sisters and brothers in rising. We'll get witchy, sassy, sexy, and saucy. We're going to talk all things that align us with our true nature and authentic selves and create a community that expands with the ascension and growth of each of us. So grab some green juice, light some cannabis, get your blankets, or sit by the pool because we are about to rise up another level together. Catch you on the inside, dolls. Hello, my beautiful rising humans. Welcome to this next episode of Rising Goddess Radio. This is a solo cast. This is me being vulnerable with you and sharing some things that I've been experiencing over these past days. I'd say roughly a week, but the epitome of it, the clarity aspect of it happened this weekend. And this week I... um. It's all the aftershocks, the clarity, the alignment, the expansion, the physical uncomfortableness that happens. You know, when we become aware of something consciously, there's no point to go back to the unconscious perspective because A, it's not fun, and B, that's not what we're meant to do. We're not meant to come here to be asleep. So, um, you might hear me staring my drink. Normally I'd be doing my reading. I've got my cards set out. It's morning time. You know, I'm I'm following with what feels good to do with my life. It's as a generator, I'm learning more and more, um, the conscious aspect of how to do that as I have been already studying the energetic spiritual aspect and witchy aspect of that. I feel like my voice is super low today, so whatever, we're just going to roll with it. Can you hear the procrastination in me instead of just diving into what I want to (laughs) share? Yeah, I know. So, um, if you have been following me and have listened to all these episodes, then, um, you know that, um... My husband and I are recently new into the lifestyle. We, um, we have a a more open, fluid marriage, um, and, uh, we've been going through so much growth and ascension since we, um, decided to do this. Um, this is something we've talked about for many years. And if you listen to the episode with, um, Tara Rose and James from Sex Uninterrupted, Um, then I talk about how we've been talking about all these different things for so long and that, um, it took me, uh, working through a lot of shame within myself, which is why I teach what I teach because it's what I do within myself. But, um, so when we also, uh, decided to, um, just jump in and, and become part of the lifestyle. We, uh, my husband also quit smoking cigarettes. Um, he'd been smoking for over 20 years. And as you all know, if you're a smoker, you can understand, um, you know, the, uh, 
challenge of quitting smoking. Now, good thing is, is that, you know, my husband's also an amazing cannabis grower. And so we have many different strains that can help transition. So this was really such um, a smooth transition in the physical aspect of it. His body went through some physical changes and detoxing, of course. But when he quit smoking, um, our all the shit started to come up because smoking cigarettes was his bypass. That was the addiction for him. It was the bypassing vice for him. So, um, you know, and smokers out there, you realize, I mean, I was a smoker for a long time. I quit smoking back in February of 2009, 10 years ago already. It's crazy. Um, but you know, when you're happy, you have a smoke. When you're sad, you have a smoke. When you're stressed, you have a smoke. When you're excited, you have a smoke. When you're done eating, you have a smoke. When you're waiting to eat, you have a smoke. <laughs> you know, you have a fucking smoke for everything, right? Um, and so uh, there's many, 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 many years of bypassing um, that all started to come up. And this was uh, quantifiable growth. Um, in these last four months that both my husband and I have been through specifically since he put and stopped smoking, then that was a huge block that was able to be removed. Just that particular aspect of it, um, with the awareness of our relationship and the connection. And then of course, diving into past lives and stuff like that, which I'm going to get into here, but, um, so uh, me coming out of, you know, the fear and the shame and, um, you know, allowing myself to stand in my truth of being bisexual and wanting to have a relationship with a woman, um, that is fun and exciting and vulnerable and passionate and, you know, all sorts of fun things, you know, I want, you know, all of that witchy shit and magic and conscious connection and cosmic, you know, magic. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's taken me quite a bit of time to work through this. And, um, this past weekend, um, I had quite a bit of clarity and that's why I wanted to come in here and share with you that I realized I still have been afraid of women and in all aspects of my life, not just in the sexual aspect or, you know, relationship aspect, but I mean, in all types of relationship aspects, um, the women in my past paradigm in my world. And there was like one or two that would pop through that are still in my world today that while we may not um, connect and talk all the time, there is this um, energetic connection of knowing between um between us and I'm sure you understand that right it's like those friends that um it, it's not quite at this level but it's at a different level a different perspective a different vibrational connection but you know when you have those friends where you haven't talked to in forever and then all of a sudden you message and it's like everything just picks right back up from where it was you know there was like it was like there was no time lost you know but yet you have all of these things to talk about and share about and work together on and all of that but, um, you know, majority of the women in my previous paradigm of this life living existence, um, have all been extremely critical of me. Of course, knowing now that when we're critical of others, we've ultimately critical of ourselves, but, um, extremely, extremely critical of me. Now let's take a pause right there. And then, uh, let's take a, let's take a journey to a past life, right? I've had a couple different lives here. Um, but the most recent one is the one that I'm working through with my karmic debt. This drink is actually pretty good. I'm trying out some new stuff. I'm talking about it on my story. So make sure you follow me at Instagram at the rising goddess underscore. So anyways, this past life of mine, this most recent one, I was perpetuating the witch wound from the most manipulative, chaotic femme state. Um, I was very manipulative. I was very uh, forceful. I was very stuck up. I was, um, uh, I was the 
I would make people do things and then I would take it from them. Um, I was uh, very selfish. Um, I was just um, pretty much the extreme opposite of what I am right now and who I am now. And here's how we'll get to this point, right? So I was very, very wealthy. I had lots of money, but all of the money and stuff that I got, I manipulated and basically took advantage of and all of these things to get my money. So I would step on people to make my money. I would I would just do these terrible things. I would treat my relationships like fucking shit. Um, and so this was the person that I was in my last life. Now... Fast forward to this life (laughs) and um, in my past paradigm, you know, growing up, um, there were moments of of joy, moments of happiness, moments. It wasn't like the entire existence was fucking terrible. Of course not. There was moments of fun, moments of, you know, um, connection. And and it's those moments that I hold on to as I look at my seven of swords. Um. My steampunk tarot deck has the seven of swords where you're walking away from societal, the eye of society and walking within your own and taking with you what works and leaving what doesn't, right? And that's what happens when you awaken, right? When you go from being asleep and living in this past paradigm, when you hear me talk about my past paradigm, that's me asleep. And then when you become awake, You realize as you go through the pendulum aspect, right? A lot of us, when we wake up, we wake up angry and then we realize all of the things in our world and in that, in the life that we lived, we realize all of the things that happened to us was ultimately based off of the choices that we made, whether we allowed someone else to do something to us or whether we allowed to fall into the power and letting the other person have the power in whatever situation. Now this is, you know, anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but basically ultimately everything comes down to our choices right we came here with free will we have the free will to choose whatever it is we have the freedom to choose and that is energetically that's choosing to give choosing to let someone take choosing to fall into the truth and believing other people's truths about you choosing to to believe you know all of those things right and so we spend we swing up onto this pendulum where we're super angry and then all of these things flood through And we can't really tap into the um, memories, like the positive aspects of our lives from that moment. And, And this usually happens when we first initially wake up. And then as we start to go through and we start to actually, you know, we open up Pandora's box and we start to actually face everything that's been in her box. Um, then we start to see times where we had, um, moments of joy or moments of happiness that were, pivotal moments in us continuing through our life and in and us holding on yet not from a place of holding on for dear life like that kitty poster um but holding in as in the six of cups right as in the holding memories and creating the memories of those and being able to um allow uh, some of the pain and the hatred and the um, the fear that we've had around the people in our lives and, and in that experience and we're able to see them from the standpoint of being an awakened being, right? We realize that they too were going through shit in their own world and and they were expressing it based off of how they knew how to, right? So then we start to balance out the pendulum And we start to awaken to a more conscious state through genuine love, learning about detachment, letting go, codependency. And then as we start to go in there, we start to expand more. Now, I know this (laughs) this episode's like all over the place right now. I'm going to be honest. It's morning. I'm drinking this good, this energy. It's not an energy. It's more of like a antioxidant focus type drink. I'm probably doing it no justice when I talk about it right now. But, you know, I'm a little high. I've smoked a little bit of bud this morning. I'm on day two of my cycle, so it's just conversations with Misha right now as I become vulnerable and each time I get closer and closer to whatever it is that is coming out, then my ego wants to procrastinate, so then that way I can just digress and move on to other things. (laughs) 
It's funny when you are aware of your bullshit. (laughs) You don't want to run and hide from it anymore, you know? So. I digress. Let me get back. So in my last paradigm, even when I met Sean, because I didn't awaken until you know, a few years ago. I mean, it's been rapid growth and ascension since then, which means I'm obviously moving in the right direction, which is another thing I'll talk about another episode. But, you know, in my last paradigm, I would be able to manifest and hustle. I was a hustler. I was a motherfucking hustler. I uh, ran call centers. I was the one that trained people. I would, I could fucking hop on the phone and I could fucking sell somebody something that they didn't even realize that they wanted because they never knew that they even didn't want it. And then I, I mean, I could sell them anything and I could hustle from a place of fucking, um, chaos. And, you know, I was manipulative and, excuse me, I just knocked the microphone. I was manipulative and, um, but it still, it wasn't from a place of, uh, selfishness at this time. It was a place from a place of survival mode. Right. So my last life was from selfishness. I had, I took everything and I did it from a different standpoint. And in this life, previous paradigm, I did the same thing, but it was from survival mode because this new life that I came into, um, I chose that to, to, to come into this world to heal from that last life. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much in depth I'm going to get regarding the past life stuff. Maybe I'll do another episode on that. But this is the point of this particular episode. Is that in my last life, I perpetuated the witch wound. And when I awoke, I awakened to um, my truth I, I realized that part of my karmic debt from this past life has been to heal the witch wound. Um, and so this is what I've been working on, healing the witch wound, which is competition with other women, which falls in line with me, you know, uh, allowing myself to step into my bisexuality and being okay with that, right? Um, because as part of the witch wound, that that wouldn't happen because there's competition, there's there's anger, there's um jealousy, there's all of these things that we have with other women, and um. <clears throat> so we come back around, right? The last women, all the women in my last paradigm, basically um have been extremely critical of me, and so. I myself would be extremely critical of other women as soon as I would meet them as a form of protection. All of these women, whether or not um, uh, they knew it or there was no like physical or sexual attraction, there was a connection in where I saw something in them that I admired and was inspired by. And um then for them being critical of me it confused me um and it made me not trust women uh, well it didn't make me it was a part of the aspect of traveling over from a past life but it was contributing to me uh to my witch wound it was contributing to me not trusting women to be vulnerable with them. So if I felt an attraction to a woman, I would instantly be critical. Um, and you know, it's interesting because I was telling Tara Rose this when I had them on the show, when I, um, first started working in sexual alchemy, I didn't even realize she, she had triggered me with so many of her pictures on her Instagram because a, she's beautiful and you know, you know, she has great body her pictures are great her you know she's so free she's like she's confident in what she was doing and it triggered right this this um this witch wound it triggered this fear of women within me so then I was critical of her at first right 
Um, and the good news was, was that when I started doing that, I was at a point in my conscious awareness where I knew that if I was triggered emotionally, then that would activate a thought and I would get curious as to why am I feeling this way? Why am I being triggered? Right. And so not realizing any of this being asleep in my last paradigm, if I had any sort of attraction to a woman, any sort of attraction at all, um, I would instantly become critical um, to protect myself because a um, sex in and of itself when I was growing up was just not I mean it was definitely it was missionary position with your husband once you got married and it was for procreation and yes it was beautiful but that was all it was for <laughs> um, and then when I started you know going out I had I've had two experiences with women my first experience with with a woman was in college. I think that's many, <laughs> many women's first time experience. Um, and let me just refresh your memory here. If you're new to me or if you haven't known this, I went to college for like a semester and a half, maybe like, like I didn't, I, I made it halfway through basketball season, I think. Okay. So that's, because I was in pet band and marching band and shit. So anyways, it was at a frat party. And um, it was my first frat party. And uh, one of the dudes I knew, like, I he was older. I was a freshman. He was a senior. And it was like, you know, I was like, oh, you know, because I'm in this, like, everybody needs to love me phase because if not everybody loves me, then I'm not worthy and I don't love myself and I don't deserve my own love and I deserve to be treated all these ways and all these things, right? Um, and so uh, I was flirting with him and then um, another friend that I had, started making friends with during band camp she was there and so um her and I decided to go ahead like why the fuck not right and from what I remember he ended up being a fucking douche and her and I just started focusing on each other <laughs> and then we became pretty much best friends after that point um she was a pivotal and most um an extremely um I'm getting emotional <laughs> this is probably going to be an emotional episode She came at a time in my life where I really, truly needed her. And I didn't understand, but I was in this rebellious phase too, so I was like, fuck everything, and I don't care what mom and dad say, and you know, I got kicked out of the house, and dropped out of college, and you know, all these things, but... Um, so that was my first experience with a woman. Um, and then she ended up leaving. She went to the uh, Air Force and, you know, we talked a bit. And she's an amazing woman and a mother. She's married. She has a fabulous life. And, you know, we connect periodically. Um, and so then... Um, my next experience was I was working at the place where I actually where I met my husband, but I worked at that place twice. Um, but the first time I worked there and um, I was friends with pretty much, you know, well, me, I was always trying to be friends with everyone. Right. So I would uh, be a chameleon and, you know, whatever group I wanted to be a part of, then I would um f play the part of that Lego piece and fit in and then you know when it was to the point of where I just couldn't handle it anymore like I was you know overly attaching and codependent then I would go and then be a chameleon with another group and you know I realized you know too you know I had a best friend for 20 years and I broke up with her and this is another episode but this is part of the witch wound she's part of this you know I was inspired by her and um, intrigued by her for so long I thought that sh she was the one that I could look up to to help me learn how to be a woman 
and it was a very unhealthy codependent relationship and she was very critical of me and I was very critical of her when I was angry and I would come back you know but she would you know she would be friends with me and then she would make a new friend and everything would be exciting and she'd run off and go play with them for a while you know and then they'd fuck her over and she'd come back because here's Michelle always here to be the one you know to please you right so anyways another digression so a few years later um, I'm working at this place and I'm friends with these people, these women, and I'm, you know, super fun, having a great time. And one night I go out, um, I'm at a karaoke bar, I'm getting drunk. And um, we go back to her house and, um, you know, from what I remember, because I blocked out quite a bit, but from what I remember, we started making out and then, you know, she went down on me. And I remember in that whole experience that I was enjoying it and I was disgusted all at the same time. A, I was critical of every single thing of my body. I was critical of every single thing of her body. B, I hated my vagina and I had the most terrible relationship with her and I was disgusted by her and everything aspects of her. So then I was therefore disgusted with this other woman. Like how could she actually fucking... I mean, like, seriously, like, how could she even do this? Because if I'm disgusted, then she loves it, then she must be disgusting, right? And then, and then, of course, there's you're going to hell, you're already burning in hell, you've made this choice, that's it, you can't be saved, you're, you know, all of those things going through. Um, and so then I blocked that, some of that, off I blocked some of it because I had all of those it was such a it was such a terrifying and exhilarating experience all in one and um, you know when I was talking with um, Sean this weekend he asked me about her and he was like you know when this happened you know were you attracted to her at all? And I was like, no, I didn't have any sort of physical attraction to her. I didn't like this about her and I didn't like this about her and I didn't like this about her. And he was like, so you were critical. And I was like, Ugh, you know, and then I was like, obviously, since I'm feeling emotion about this right now, <laughs> I'm getting all fucking smart assy. And so that's when I realized that I was still afraid of women I was still so critical of myself because of that fear. I wouldn't allow myself to accept compliments or even look at myself and sh tell myself or say, yeah, I know I'm a beautiful person. I'm hot. I'm sexy. Because if I did that, then I would be the same person that I was in my last life. And in an unconscious vibrational way, I was afraid to let myself shine. I was afraid to let myself have the confidence in me and knowing what I can do and my wisdom and my gifts and my powers, my magic. Because if I allowed myself to do that, if I allowed myself to receive the success, if I allowed myself to be vulnerable with a woman and have the type of relationship that I want to experience in this world and all the different fun and passionate and exciting aspects of L-I-V-I-N. If I want to help women fall madly in love with themselves, then I have to stop being afraid of all women and believing that all these women are critical of me. We're in a group in another social media aspect where there's all these beautiful people and couples and these women are posting beautiful pictures and they're all beautiful. And, you know, I, I'm an exhibitionist. I like sharing all sorts of pictures and flashing. I mean, I've been flashing people since I was fucking, I don't know, 15, 16. <laughs> I mean, you live on the fucking 
strip. I mean, that was like the weekend thing. Once you started driving, then you could go out, create a fake name, already have a fake ID, right? Flashing fucking people coming to Vegas. and I was either Jennifer or Camille. Those are my two fake names. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> As I continue to start recreating, recreating the relationship with my own body, I remove the critical aspects. I remove the criticisms. I'm human. There's no uh, perfection to seek. We already are perfect. There's nothing to fix within me. There's only that to shine and rise up. And the work is to get rid of all the fucking bullshit and the fears. Healing this karmic debt. My purpose is helping women rise up. Helping Magdalene's fall in. Realize that you are the magic. And that we can have connecting relationships whether sexual or not you know being in the lifestyle it's not all about being sexual (laughs) it's not all about fucking sex this is a lot of what I'm learning it's about really understanding people and relationships and there's a lot of healing that is happening and trying to happen and removing these fears and conditioning and this indoctrination that sex is bad and that to to be vulnerable with The same sex, whether a man or a woman, is bad. To be vulnerable at all is bad. This is this this terrible conditioning, these beliefs, this programming that when we come into, like these are all the things that we're taught. We don't come in with fears and and criticisms and judgments and and lack of self belief and 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 lack and fear. Like we, we don't come into this world with that. We're taught that. And so I was part of the perpetuation of the witch wound in the last life that I lived. And that vibrational energy, that fiber has been attached to my being for a very long time. And this weekend I was able to release that. So a lot of this growth has been so much energetically and spiritually and mentally I've been crying for a week and a half (laughs) and and the momentum shift is happening within my world see we would be in these cycles these constant cycles with our finances and our money we would go into these these fear cycles like I used to wake Sean up like in a panic or like you know, like if like a bill would come through and it would overdraw our account and then we had no, like it would be this panic and like we would sit in like the bathroom all day or and crying or in the car or whatever. We would just be in this complete state of hopelessness and fear and in this survival mode. And this was this past paradigm that we lived in, which was continuous fibers from that last life. Sean's last life was, he was a dick too. <laughs> and we're twin flames. This is not our first life together. So we were fucking dicks together. <laughs> but it's important to realize that we don't need to be afraid of other women. We don't need to feel that if. I succeed, I'm not taking from somebody else. If I have confidence in knowing that I can help another woman fall in love with herself and remove all of those fears and conditionings and programming so she can rise up into her beautiful goddessness self, then I have to be that. I have to be able to be vulnerable. I have to allow myself to be completely honest. 
not be ashamed or afraid of where I'm at financially. Look, we're at a step by step moment to moment basis in this business with, you know, my business is sex. Do you know how much (laughs) bullshit people have around their sex energy? So yeah, this work needs to be done. Because there's men out there who are afraid to be vulnerable with their women or with other men. There's women out there I know that you're still afraid of other women. That that, that you see these women out there, right? Who like are like doing these amazing things and they're 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 like so, you know, shining and 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 all of these uh, beautiful things and we think, oh my god, like these women are just so like next level, so beautiful. And but the thing is, is like so are we. <laughs> You're just as beautiful. You're just as magical. There's nobody better than you. We're all just different expressions of that same love that we all want to share and and create. So. (laughs) If you're still afraid of women, I understand. But the time is now. It's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable in friendships. It's okay to be vulnerable in sexual relationships. It's okay to be vulnerable with your own self. We're in this shift. We're in this new world. And while it may be uncomfortable physically, you may cry like I am right now on this fucking podcast. (laughs) You may feel nauseous. You may feel angry. You may feel frustrated. You may feel terrified. But those aren't your truth. (laughs) Your truth is the joy that you feel when you allow yourself to truly fall in to your magic and trust your flavor. So, (laughs) for all of you women out there, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so thankful for the work that you're doing. And I'm thankful for the space that you hold for me listening (laughs) to my rambles. (laughs) And understand that you no longer need to be afraid of your truth. And you no longer need to be afraid of women. Your magic is just as powerful. Your flavor is just as magical. Trust it. So, (laughs) this is the work that I do. If you feel like you've been stuck in your life in one way, shape, or form, whether career, relationships, of course, is my main focus. Then reach out because this is what I do. I help women work through this. And when we do it together, then there's quantifiable results. I'm talking like massive shifts. And not only for you, but for all the women around you. And the women before you. And the women after you. This is some serious work 
to be done. And I know you're out there. Because I can feel you. I can feel you searching. I can feel you questioning. I can feel you desiring. I can feel you looking. So, come find me. (laughs) Come check out uh, the Rising Goddess group on Facebook. That's our amazing community of other rising goddesses who are searching and seeking within themselves. Learning to release and shed and rise. Come find me on Instagram at Goddess underscore. And um, come follow me on my Facebook page too, Michelle Torrance dash Goddess. And I'd love to just connect. That's it. I'm here to help. The work I do is important. The work I do is changing lives. The work I do is waking people up to their next level. And if that's you, let's get to work. So, I'll catch you all in the next episode. Later.